to another installment of Wine Tasting with Giants, Jayton Gunter, and I have our guest here, Renato Porch. I call him Reno, so I'm going to be calling him Reno the whole uh, interview, just a heads up or a conversation that you want. Um, let's get into the wine first, and then we'll go into why I brought him on the show. So, we have a Malbec 2013 uh, out of Livermore, California. Now, this is the thing with Malbec. Malbec's normally a Bordeaux varietal, um, also another in Cahors in uh, France. They have a lot. They plant a lot of Malbec. It is can, it can be do well by itself, but it's really used as a blending grape for some places, unless you're in Argentina where it's very prevalent right now. That's the main hub for Malbec. It's rare to have something in California. Um, there's a lot planted, but bottled is different. They use it for blending a lot of times. So this is a treat for us to be able to sip on this out of Livermore Valley, which I love. If you ever get a chance to go down there, check it out. It is amazing grapes from like really obscure white grapes to obscure red grapes all the way across. So I'm going to pour you a little bit and then we'll taste a little bit. Let me cheers with you first, man. Thanks for coming on my show. I appreciate no it. No problem, man. No Salute, problem. Salute. Salute. All right, so let's put our nose in the glass and see what's going on here. So before I steal the show, uh, did you get anything? You smell anything? It doesn't matter what you say. You can say whatever you feel like, bro. I mean, the normal grape process, uh, that smells really sweet smelling. Okay, it's so really it's, sweet. So more fruit forward? Yeah, yeah. It has a really sweet smell to me. Yeah, I definitely get that. I get like this, uh, you know those like red cherries that they that they put in cocktails and drinks and stuff uh, like that? Like in cherry cordial, soda. Cordial cherries, yeah. 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 I get a lot of that on the nose. I get a lot of like, uh, I get some like uh, licorice too going on. Mm. And like a lot more floral, like flowers, like uh, more violets. So that's what I'm getting on the nose. I'm going to taste a little bit, see if everything translates to the palate. Yeah, that's good. It's real tasty. Uh, if you're uh, just getting into wine and you're just curious about like, you're, you're curious about wine that's serious but not over the top, this is a really good bottle for you. You can find it anywhere. Go online. Um, it's pretty much available most places. Not not like safe or anywhere, but like Bevmo, things like that. You can probably find this bottle. Um, but it's a, it's a nice it's a nice balance between a beginner wine and a intermediate wine because it's fruit forward. You still get that fruit up front that we were talking about. Those cherries, a little bit of plum is coming in there too. But on the finish, it's high acid. Um, you can pair it with food. You can drink it by itself. It's really, really, really well-balanced wine and really fun and delicious. Uh, barbecue would be amazing with this. Short ribs with some mm -hmm. slathered in it be off the hook. So anyway, now to the reason that I brought my boy Reno on the show. Um, years ago, I would say about 10 to about 14, well, about 10 to about 14 years ago, uh, down, I used to live downtown San Jose. I went to college there. Um, and, I, and I was really into the nightlife. I loved it. Um, I felt like I, I was running things. I was the king. I could go anywhere I wanted. It was all good. You know, we got, we had hooked up with the bartenders. Everybody knew each other. It was a close-knit environment. And then, you know, I, I got, the older I got, the more I got pulled out of it. And uh, still, still appreciate downtown San Jose, but I just have I don't really go out there too much anymore. But then, like, my boy who I used to work with, his name's is ringing a little, little bit of bells out there. I, uh, I just didn't know he was so deep into it because he has a business life that he deals with mostly. So when I heard about it, I went to go check out one of his clubs, um, and it was absolutely one of the best nights I've had in a long time, man. Uh, me and my lady went, we had enjoyed ourselves. Uh, this guy is amazing host. He knows what he's doing. He's become, in my opinion, the king of downtown San Jose nightlife. Um, and um, just kind of tell us what got you into it. I'm just curious. Um... Well, actually, my love of music, uh, you know, coming from Louisiana, uh, we really didn't have too many options uh, of different, like, venues. You would either go probably hardcore rap yeah. or rock and roll. Gotcha. That was just, like, the two options that you really had was no intertwining. Who were you listening to out there? Uh, definitely No Limit, <laughs> Cash Money. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, those are like pretty much the two, uh, Staples. you have your Texas boys too, um, you have UGK, uh, Pimp C yeah. was like the king at the time, yeah. uh, Lil Flip. Dealing with Bun B out there too? Yeah, man. yeah, I gotta give my hats off to yeah. Bun B. Um, and then it's like, you know, you kind of wanted to say, where, where's the in-between at, right? Yeah. 
So when I moved to California about 10 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, how diverse it is out here in California, I just automatically fell in love. Like, there was, like, every nationality in the world was at, you know, these venues, you know, the bars, the nightclub, mm -hmm. and then it was just something about it that just made me attracted to it, like, overnight. So um, I used to go out downtown all the time this place called myth yeah I've never uh, been. it's on post street yeah uh that's where i kind of like really started hanging out uh, i would go to freddie j's uh that was the other place that i frequented a lot and then all of a sudden this one place called taste opened up okay uh, i actually remember hearing when they would open up again my area was not to the ground was not in these streets for a while, but I was hearing about this place taste because it was everywhere. It was everywhere on the media. Was talking about this like nice nightclub that was not in downtown San Jose. It was like outer, and yeah. normally they don't get a lot of plug. But they was, I was hearing them. If I'm hearing about them, then they're doing something big. And there was like three of them. There was like one in San Jose, uh -huh. pretty much one in Stockton. Okay. They even opened up one in Arizona. <laughs> I mean, it was really? just like the name just it was blowing up like that. Over. Yes, um, and so bore. Oh, was like uh, also like a expansion of it. Mm -hmm. So uh, went to taste, and pretty much it would be myth and taste, myth and taste, myth and taste. And the DJs, the music was just so great. And then I used to, you know, pretty much got friends with everybody: the hosts, mm -hmm. the bartenders, um, the owners, the people who promoted. They just kind of took me on as family. You know, it's just like people person. Yeah. That's just kind of like I mean, what I am. You know. That guy, man. Um, Always. It, it was just, you know, humbling, man, you know, and then they kind of took me on, and then one day, uh, one of the GMs for Tacey asked me, he said, hey, uh, you ever want to do this nightlife thing, man, you know, I got something for you. He's like, hold on. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> what you mean? What, wait, what, what, what? So, Excuse he was like. It's just hot in here, so <laughs> go ahead and do this, but go ahead and finish. Um, he was like, you know, I want you to come, I want you to become a host mm -hmm. for Tacey, you know, I got it. Little, little bit, uh, yeah, good, good looking good, out, good, good looking out, man. I got to stay sexy. All right, all right. Uh, <laughs> he was like, I want you to be a host uh, for taste. Uh, and so I went in next week, man, and it was just like all about the customer service experience. So like my whole background is all customer service. Yeah. And that's what he appreciated, you know. So I started that with taste, and then that was like three years ago. So being in VIP. Wait, hold on, so you, you've done all this stuff in three you did all this in three years? I've done all this in three years. In three years, I've been to three So he started, nights. he's basically started hosting at Taste, right? You were hosting the VIP mm -hmm. and stuff? Yes. All right, all right, continue. Because there's more, there's more coming that he's doing too, and it's like, wow. Yeah, so Taste was pretty much like the South Bay's number one club. I mean, we used to have like between 600, 900 people a night on wow. the Fridays and wow. Saturdays. Um, and cool. then, you know, business uh ownership mm -hmm. kind of like bumped heads so uh one of my friends he opened up another venue it was called avery uh we went over there okay. and you know did the same thing you know where, VIP where, host. if you know downtown san jose is where agenda used to be it used to be agenda used yes. to be agenda that yes. we thought would never close down it's been there forever and it finally you know bid it a little bit so so um you know avery was there and they've been open for six months and you know, another opportunity came for me um, pretty much within the last month. And if you ever been to Freddie J's or uh, Mission Ale House, uh, it is that? now called Enzo Nightclub. Enzo Nightclub. Um, so I'm doing the same thing over there, you know, VIP services. Uh, you need bottle service or anything, you know. He's the man. Southwest yeah. Legacy on Instagram. Yeah. Um, it's, it's one of the best venues that I've seen as far as like grand opening. Grand opening of Enzo Nightclub. Um, and it was huge, man. We we hit about 357 people and our cap is around like four on the first hundred on the first night, man. Um, you know, social media has put us in a position to where it doesn't matter where you're at in the world. Yeah, you can get, you, you can reach out and touch somebody. If I ever come to the yeah. Bay Area, I know where to go. Uh -huh. Um and that's kinda like the the good side yes. of social media, you yeah. know, especially when People are looking for things to do. Yeah. Um, the diversity this weekend was just awesome. The DJs, we had four DJs spinning. Um, four. Yeah, so how I many, like, is yeah. it like one of those places where you have different rooms? Yeah, we oh, do. Okay. We have, uh, we got a main room, we have a side room, and the best thing I can say is we have a patio. 
<laughs> and we have an outside bar at that patio. Okay, so I'm coming through there. It's, all you have something. to do is tell me the outside area. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm that guy, man. I like to be on the patio chilling. Everybody else can be dancing, doing whatever. I'll grab me a drink, and if they're smoking out there, I smoke my cigar, and I'm good. Exactly. I don't need nothing else. I'm good. It's like the, the chill session of this world, you know, so you can still hear the music. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it wasn't like overly crowded where, you know, you're... Excuse me, excuse yeah. me, excuse Plopping me. Each other, yeah. We had a good traffic control, man. People really enjoyed the music. Uh, this one drink we had at Taste, it was uh, called the Godzilla, uh, right? It's just a mixture of every poison in the world. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an adios or something. Like that. Yeah, and it comes in a goblet. So we, we were able to bring that uh, back to Enzo and everybody who've been rocking with us since Taste. They knew exactly They're about like, oh, give it to, give me, give me Actually, I'm going to take that back. Sabor. Sabor, okay. So they were like, Thanks, okay, Sabor. can I get a Godzilla? And when the first person came out with that green drink yeah. with the glow stick, they were ah. like, oh, man, they got the Godzilla. <laughs> I got to get one. So um, we sold about 125 Godzillas. Okay. That night, so just think about all those people. 125? 125 Godzillas. Oh, so they, they, these were people that rocked with you then. Yeah, and gotcha. just the jealousy, you know, you see something <laughs> that catch your eye, you like, you know, I want to taste I that. I want to. Exactly. <laughs> um, you know, being being in the nightlife, it, it can definitely be tough, uh -huh. but just think about how much power you have as a VIP host, right? The one night that people want to come out and celebrate their birthday uh -huh. or a celebration, you know, or a happy moment. Or, you know, just be I real. Mean, I, just, I want to get out. I, I'm not, I want to either have a good time or I need my friends to take me out. I'm in control of that. See, that's that's something I want to, that's that's another reason why I brought you out, man. Like, we, me and my lady don't go out too much. Like, we go out every once in a while, but, like, and, and when we go out, it's more for, like, restaurants. It's more for, like, just, you know, like, just outings. Like, we don't really go to clubs anymore and dance like we used to. And, um, like, I, you told me, she goes, I mean, not really me, but anyway, so <laughs> basically, when you were like, come through, I'll take care of you, just don't even worry about anything, and just because I wanted to see DJ Jazzy Jeff, and you made that night, like, like DJ Jazzy Jeff was off the hook, he's always going to be your yes. performance, he killed it, right, <laughs> but the way I felt when I walked, when you, when you came out and grabbed me and brought me to the front of the line and bring me up, like, everything you did that night was so on point, I was like, yo, I got to give this guy a plug, next time I can get you on... Like, in front of the camera, I have to do it, and that's why I brought you. I wanted them to see who you were so that they can come and bother you to get on the VIP <laughs> list, and you can hook them up, and you got more traffic coming in. I appreciate because, that. Because you deserve it. Like, you're, man, you're, you're, you're a great host, man, honestly. Um, and that brings me to the next thing. What's in the future for you? Do you have, any, do you have anything nailed down, or are you just, you're just laying in the pocket right now, and you're enjoying life for what it is? Well, um, you know, this is kind of like the minor step for myself, right? Um... Doors open up more doors, open up more doors. Uh, and I'll tell you like one of my childhood secrets, right? So, uh, this movie, Thin Line Between Love and Hate. Oh, I love that movie. <laughs> Bart Bart Lawrence, and, uh, yeah, boy. Bart Lawrence, yeah. right? And Bobby Brown. Yes. And he ran a nightclub. Yeah. It actually made me want to run a nightclub exactly. because of that. Exactly. The way that, he was running it? That made me fall in love with the nightlife. And I never imagined myself, one, being in California. Because, you know, I'm from a small little country in Louisiana, a little city town. Um, she give it a plug. Where's it, where is it at? Plaquemine, Louisiana. There we go, Plaquemine. Yeah. <laughs> right next to Baton Rouge, you know, Southern University graduate. Uh, LSU is out there, if you're more familiar with that. Uh, but, yeah, that's where we have Mardi Gras, New Orleans. Yeah, oh, yeah. drive through alcohol spots. Yes. Uh, daiquiris. They don't care if you drive. <laughs> drive, 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 drive. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all, man. They give you destroyed everything. They're like, here you go. Uh, you know, but, you know, moving to California, it definitely gave me um, a huge opportunity to expand whatever I want to do. Like, this is where your dreams can come true, it's you know. True. So, me doing the hosting thing. You know, I'm not stopping here. I'm just going to expand. And whether that's in sales, whether that's in, you know, eventually opening up my own nightclub yeah. or partnering with somebody to, you know, run a nightclub or, you know, catering. Any any little thing that has to do with people. You want to be That's part of what I'm going to be a part of for the rest of my life, hands down. That's my call. That's awesome, man. That's my that's call. Awesome. I love that. That's why you work so well at our old job. I'm not going to even give any anything to me right now. Congratulations <laughs> on you, though. <laughs> He's still there. I'm like, I got it. <laughs> yeah, I'm still there. That's what pays the bills. And, you know? and he does very well. He did really well when I was there, too. He actually used to be my manager. So 
Anyway, where can they find where can they find you on social media so we can uh, get them running up your your bills? Okay, so <laughs> all right, uh, on my Facebook it's Reno Porch R E N O Reno like Nevada last name Porch. Um, my Instagram is Southwest Legacy. Um, anytime you guys want to come out to Enzo, you know, feel free to hit me up. You know, instant message me, DM me. I got you. You know, I want to make sure that. Whoever comes through has the time of their life. That is my job. That is my business. That's people. So this is going to stay good as long as you're in my hands. Gotcha. That's some real stuff right there. I'm going to have all this information in the um, in the contents below. And then you guys already know my stuff, but I'm also going to put my stuff in there again, too. Again, this is Jayton Gunter, Wine Tasting with Gi Giants. And uh, cheers, my friend. Thanks for coming cheers. on here. No problem, Jay, man. Good luck to you, man. Thanks, brother.